This is Luxembourg, or officially the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, a small landlocked country wedged between Belgium, France and Germany, which is home to, by many metrics, the most successful economy in the world. The economy of Luxembourg is actually somewhat of a personal nuisance to me, if I'm being perfectly honest. Countless times on this channel I try to talk about just how impressive certain national economies are by saying that they are the world leader in particular economic metrics like GDP per capita, or average national wealth, or human development. The problem is I almost always have to make the small disclaimer that this doesn't include micronations like Monaco or Luxembourg, and I should really clarify that this is micronations like Monaco, comma, or Luxembourg, because Luxembourg isn't a micronation. It's a small country geographically with a small population, but it's not a micronation. It has much more in common with its neighbours than it does with something like Monaco, Liechtenstein or the Vatican. It's easy to understand why Monaco has such impressive economic statistics. It's a country with very favourable tax laws for wealthy people looking for a new place to call home. Rich people are attracted to it because of these tax laws and because it's a nice safe place to live with a thriving social scene of other rich people. All that demand combined with a tiny supply of land means that only rich people can afford to live there and if a country is filled with very wealthy international business people and celebrities it doesn't really matter what the government's economic policies are, it's inevitably going to have the highest GDP per capita in the world. Luxembourg almost breaks our traditional understanding of economics though because it's achieved tax haven micronation levels of wealth while effectively just being a regular economy. It's not a tax haven, and most of its residents are regular working people. It has regular industries, a regular government, and regular tax revenues. The only thing is, despite all of its apparent regularities, it's by far the wealthiest country in the EU, and also the wealthiest regular economy in the world. Luxembourg has a GDP per capita of $133,590, which is almost double that of the United States with a GDP per capita of $70,249. The USA itself is also an incredibly productive country, but Luxembourg's economic output is 13 times the global average. Even if this can't be replicated in our own economies, it can teach us a lot about what GDP actually is and how much it really means for real economic prosperity. So how did Luxembourg achieve such high levels of economic output? Is it possible for other economies to do the same thing? And finally, are there any threats to their incredible levels of economic prosperity? Once we've done all of that, we can put Luxembourg on the Economics Explained national leaderboard. This episode of Economics Explained was brought to you by ShipStation. ShipStation is an essential tool for anybody that wants to run their business that ships products to customers. ShipStation has a dashboard that organises everything a business could ever want for its shipping. It integrates orders from Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Shopify and more into one place so that you can manage every order from one simple to use dashboard. The dashboard also allows you to automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimise every shipment and automate delivery notifications to keep your customers in the loop. ShipStation not only makes shipping much easier, it also makes it much cheaper as well. Working with ShipStation can get you up to 84% off UPS and USPS rates which means that you can offer free shipping to your customers while still looking after your bottom line. For all of these reasons, ShipStation is trusted by 130,000 companies that have grown their e-commerce businesses with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. If that wasn't enough, you can get a 60 day free trial by using the link on screen now or in the video description below. Thanks to ShipStation for sponsoring the show. Luxembourg's incredible wealth does not come from just attracting really wealthy people to live there by giving them a tax break. In fact, the country actually has reasonably high income taxes. That means that the country generates its wealth by having extremely productive industries and equally productive workers. But how does the average Luxembourger produce twice as much as an average worker in the USA? Well, they pick their industries very carefully. Luxembourg only has a population of 640,000, which is well above microstate levels, but is still smaller than almost all major cities in the world. So its industries are not nearly as diverse as the USA's, but the ones that it does have are highly value adding. Banking, steel production and tourism account for most of its economic output, which are all perfect industries, but all for different reasons. Starting with banking, financial services account for more than half of the country's entire GDP. Typically we think of Switzerland when we think of highly efficient and discreet European banking, but Luxembourg is an even more attractive destination to a lot of very wealthy individuals and institutions. Luxembourg has a lot of advantages over Switzerland, which means that it's just a better choice for a lot of financial services. For starters, it's in the EU and it uses the Euro. If you are a wealthy European or running a European business, it makes sense to have your banking done in your own currency as opposed to a foreign currency like the Swiss franc, even if it is very stable and secure. 
Being part of the EU also gives it tax and legal advantages that are not available to Swiss banks, or are certainly not as easy to get around. Now, in the past, these financial services have been the cause of concern for a lot of their neighbours because Luxembourg developed the same reputation that Switzerland had, which was that it's a place that you go to do banking if you have something to hide, which, given their equally strict banking privacy laws, was not an unfair assumption. This reputation in the past put them on the G20's grey list of countries with questionable banking arrangements. Being on this list opened them up to scrutiny that could eventually lead them to being cut off from global payment networks like SWIFT or having other restrictions placed on their most important industry. The country very quickly amended a few key tax laws and was removed from the grey list just a few months later. Obviously they didn't want to stay on this list because even if they were benefiting from hiding money or facilitating tax avoidance, it wouldn't be worth it compared to how much they were making from just providing good banking services to good customers. The country is home to the third most competitive financial centre in Europe behind only London and Zurich. Given the country's small population, most of their banking is focused on international clients, and because that's their focus, they become really good at it. Managing finances across multiple legal jurisdictions, language barriers and business cultures is difficult, and it's a highly prized service that a lot of companies are willing to pay a lot of money for. Most multinationals operating in Europe will work with Luxembourgish banks, accountants and lawyers because they are well respected, very efficient and act as a one-stop shop for everything those companies might need to do business across the continent. The official language of Luxembourg is Luxembourgish, but since it's such a small country with such strong connections to its neighbours, English, German, French, Dutch and even Spanish and Italian are very common languages and are spoken widely by professionals providing international services in the country. Just having a centre that can communicate with all the other major economies in Europe in their own language is worth paying to have financial services centred in Luxembourg. It's actually such a widely recognised intermediary that the European Union itself headquartered the European Investment Bank in Luxembourg City. The European Investment Bank is not the same as the European Central Bank, which is the Reserve Bank of the EU. The European Investment Bank is a fund that raises its own money and then gives out loans to big projects that couldn't be individually funded by member states. The member states of the EU are technically shareholders of the European Investment Bank, although it doesn't run for a profit unless you count the economic benefits that come from being able to efficiently and cheaply fund infrastructure projects. The reason this is important to Luxembourg is because the country directly benefits from having such a large and influential institution operating in its capital. The average salary in the banking industry is very high, with varying estimates of around €100,000 per year, with a lot of senior bankers earning a lot more than that. The industry has around 27,000 direct employees working for 124 officially authorised banks, which might not sound like a lot, but it's around 5% of the total population. Banking also requires a lot of supporting industries like accounting, legal and IT support, which are also very skilled in value-adding industries in their own right. The economy also benefits from being able to manage so much wealth from across the world. Because it's such a popular banking destination, the total assets the banking industry controls is equal to 12 times the country's GDP. Now while they don't own those deposits, they do get to invest them, which gives them the potential to make huge profits without risking any money of their own. Luxembourg also has a surprisingly large steel industry. The country has a centuries-long history of producing some of the world's best steel components. Luxembourg is the global headquarters of ArcelorMittal, the world's second largest steel producer behind only the Chinese state-owned Baowul Steel Group. A lot of that steel is still produced within the country's small borders by well-paid, highly skilled, unionised workers using world-class equipment, furthering the country's world-leading economic output figures. Outside of banking, steel and their direct supporting services, other typical industries exist in the small country as well. But because those industries operate in a country with so many wealthy customers, they can charge a lot for their goods and services. Remember, price is a function of supply and demand. If we assume that the supply of goods and services are roughly the same as their direct neighbours, then prices will be determined by demand. Demand itself is a function of how many people are willing and able to buy stuff. When people in an economy are earning a lot of money, they will have an increased ability to purchase stuff even if prices are higher. And they are high. Luxembourg is amongst the most unaffordable countries in the world. The average expenses for a family of four is estimated at €3,300 per month before housing, and those are just basic necessities. Even though workers in Luxembourg earn a lot of money, most people just can't afford to live there. So they don't. And that's the real reason why Luxembourg is so wealthy. Luxembourgers work in world-renowned industries where they can demand very high incomes for their output. But lots of other countries have banks and specialised industries. These industries by themselves are not enough to explain how Luxembourg is twice as wealthy as the United States. And the reality is that it's not. GDP is a measure of how much an economy produces. 
GDP per capita is how much an economy produces divided by the amount of residents in that country. So you might think that an economy where GDP per capita is twice as high is twice as wealthy, with the average person having twice as much stuff. Normally this assumption is close enough, but it's a bit different in the case of Luxembourg. To increase GDP per capita, the average resident needs to produce more stuff. For an economy to achieve this, it can either give its residents access to better tools, better training or better jobs. Luxembourg does this very well. It has one of the world's best job markets, a highly skilled workforce, and access to world leading industrial and financial infrastructure. An economy can also increase GDP per capita by just getting people to work. Labour force participation is very important because if a lot of people are choosing not to work, then they will bring down the average output of the average resident. Luxembourg has a very high labour force participation rate. It has a small population and huge industries, so it needs all the workers it can get. But those industries are so large that it actually brings in a lot of workers from abroad. Normally this is where we would start talking about skilled migration, but Luxembourg has an even more direct solution to finding workers. Because it's part of the EU, it means citizens from Belgium, France and Germany can all cross its borders to work jobs in Luxembourg, and then cross the border again at the end of the day to go back home. Around 200,000 people, 46% of the country's workforce, are not residents of Luxembourg. They are residents of its neighbouring countries, but they travel to Luxembourg every day to work in one of its world famous industries. These people will be producing goods and services to contribute to the total economic output or GDP of Luxembourg, but because they are not residents, they don't get counted in the denominator when economists work out GDP per capita. If these people were included, then Luxembourg would have a GDP per capita of around 100,000 US dollars which would still be world leading, but would be more in line with other concentrated financial centres like Switzerland and Ireland. So it's not entirely a technicality of how these statistics are worked out. Luxembourg is still an economic powerhouse, and to be clear, a lot of economies, especially those in Europe where cross-border working is so easy, benefit from these calculations as well. Luxembourg is truly unique because of just how many workers are non-residents. There are no other countries in the world that bring in almost half of their workforce without them being migrants, and migrants that live and work in their host countries still get counted as residents, so they don't skew GDP per capita figures like they do in Luxembourg. If an economist was to work out GDP per capita of a high-end central business district like Central London or the Financial District of New York, it's possible they would have a GDP per capita of half a million dollars a year or more, because they house so much industry and so few actual residents. Obviously economists don't do that. But Luxembourg is kind of like if that CBD just happened to have national borders drawn around it. Okay, now it's time to put Luxembourg, the world's most productive country on the Economics Explained national leaderboard. Starting as always with size, Luxembourg has a GDP of $86.7 billion, which makes it roughly the 70th largest economy in the world. It gets a 5 out of 10. GDP per capita, we already know it's going to be a 10 out of 10. The country produces $133,590 worth of output for every resident every year, which is incredible. This is thanks to a combination of its highly skilled workforce, world class industries, and yes of course being on the right side of a technicality. Even without such a stretch of how GDP per capita is calculated, the country would still easily get a 10 out of 10. Stability and confidence is also world leading. So many institutions choose to set up operations in the country because it has proven itself to be a reliable, corruption free and safe place to get things done when lots of money is on the line. It gets a 10 out of 10. Growth has also been strong. Being so heavily involved in global banking did mean it was hurt by the GFC and the Eurozone crisis, but even as a very established economy that favours a slow and steady approach to economic management, it has grown its output by over 50% in the last decade. It gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, industry. Now, while they are world leading for their quality, the economy is still not massive. It's more of an administrative centre for operations all across Europe and the rest of the world. Even still, what it does do, it does well. It gets a 7 out of 10. Altogether, that gives Luxembourg an average score of 7.8 out of 10, which puts it all the way up here on the leaderboard. Thanks for watching, mate. Bye.